all the bioinformaticians out there, you know how to use Autodoc 4 and how to do molecular docking analysis by using Autodoc Vina or Autodoc 4 by using MGL tools. Okay, so today we are going to learn how to use Autodoc 4 and this will be a comprehensive tutorial starting from the installation to the settings to the protein and uh, the ligand uh, conformations. So we can go ahead by uh, downloading the software from the uh, website of MGL Tools or the Scripps Research Institute. We can install it and then we have to tweak some settings for Autodoc 4. Then we go ahead for the protein and the ligand. Um, you know, we are going to download uh, it from different databases and how to proceed further. Okay. The next thing that we are going to do is how to actually prepare the target, prepare the ligand, and how to set up the grid and how to set up the parameter file. And these are the main four steps in Autodoc 4 or Autodoc Vina or uh, whoever is doing molecular docking. These four settings are required to do molecular docking analysis. Okay. The next step that we are going to do is the actual docking and to analyze the conformations, the interactions and capture some high quality images uh, from MGL tools or Autodoc 4 software for publication quality figures. And uh, this will be, uh, as I said, this will be a comprehensive uh, tutorial which lasts for I think one hour or something. And we can quickly go through the theory behind Autodoc 4. Why we are using Autodoc 4? Many people, uh, I mean, all the bioinformaticians out there, they know how to do molecular docking analysis. But some people, they lack the understanding of the, uh, you know, actual technique of what is going on behind, what is the black box behind the Autodoc 4 that we need to, you know, know. So basically this Autodoc 4.2 uses a semi-empirical uh, free energy force field to evaluate the conformations during the docking simulations. Semi-empirical means some of the values or some of the energies are taken from experimental values, those are empirical values, uh, from different manuscripts, from different uh, experiments and the next thing, the semi uh, comes from the hypothesis that what we are doing actually. So whenever we do a docking analysis, it compares uh, your binding free energy or binding energies with the experimental binding energies and it can combine to give you a predicted value. So that is what called semi-empirical in nature. And even there are many softwares, those are semi-empirical in nature such as uh, Gromax, the molecular dynamics software that is also uh, based on semi-empirical uh, values or semi-empirical force fields. Likewise, in Autodoc 4 also we are going to use semi-empirical uh, force fields or the free energy estimations. Okay, so the theory goes like this. If a ligand is there and if a protein is there, so they are at first they are in unbound conditions. Okay. The protein-protein interactions are intramolecular, the ligand-ligand interactions, I mean the atoms present in the ligand, they are intramolecular. Intramolecular means inside uh, that particular, I mean there are no interactions with other uh, parameters or other states. Uh, like Likewise in, in here, if you have a ligand and if you have a protein, if they interact, that means those are intermolecular interactions if they are interacting with the uh, with their own atoms that is intramolecular in nature so we have two two conformations so one is protein unbound intramolecular state another one is the ligand unbound intramolecular so we need to predict the interaction between the ligand and the protein which is intermolecular state okay the force field evaluates the binding in two steps the ligand, the ligand and the protein start in unbound conformations. In the, in the first step, the in, intramolecular energetics are estimated for the transition 
from these unbound states to the conformation of the ligand and the protein in the bound state. So the first step and this is the transition from the unbound state to the bound state and we can evaluate the intermolecular energetics between the ligand and the protein in the second step. Okay, And then we evaluate the intermolecular energies like this intermolecular energies of combining the ligand and the protein or the ligand and the protein amino acid residues in their bound conformation. So from unbound to bound conformations we are evaluating the energetics and we estimate the free energy or the binding free energy. And the force field which is the semi-empirical force field it includes six pairwise interactions or six pairwise evaluations that is represented as V and an estimate of the conformational entropy lost upon binding. So entropy is nothing but the randomness. So if you impose any, uh, any ligand to the protein, it has several different conformations. You don't know how uh, the conformations are going to change. So this is what we call the randomness or the entropy. Okay. So <clears throat> this will be estimated as delta Z, which is binding free energy with the evaluations such as the ligand ligand bound the ligand ligand bound state minus the ligand ligand unbound state plus the evaluations of the protein protein bound state minus the protein protein unbound state plus the protein ligand bound state minus the protein ligand unbound states plus different types of conformation so generally in order of four you get 10 different conformations you can increase it to 100 thousand or whatever you like whenever you need some precise calculations then you increase the conformations that any ligand can attain whenever it is interacting with uh, the protein so this is what called the conformation so we have in general the default is uh, 10 conformations that we get from here so this L refers to the ligand and the P refers to the protein. So this is all about the theory behind the free energy scoring function that Autodoc 4 uses to estimate the binding free energy. And these are all semi-empirical values. So do not blindly believe in these conformations. Then you have to confirm it through molecular dynamic simulations, which I have uh, already made videos how to use molecular dynamic simulations and how to use molecular docking using Autodoc Vena. So these are just the estimates and to confirm it either you have to do uh, you know experiments or else uh, you can do it you can evaluate it by using molecular dynamic simulations. So now we can uh, go to the actual settings or the installation of MGL tools and we can set up the protein and ligand and we can proceed further to uh, do the actual molecular docking and to analyze different types of conformations. So let's begin. Quickly go through uh, how to download the MGL tools from the center of Center for Computational Structure Biology and we can download the MGL tools from here if you go to the download sections over here and you can see the latest version that is 1.5.7 and it is the stable version has been released and you can click here and download the Windows versions and for the Mac OS users it is a little bit tough so if you go to the home page and you can see here Mac users please note that MGL tools is not working under the Catalina OS so if you have the version before the uh, Catalina, I think uh, it's called Mojave. And uh, if you have Mojave, then uh, you can install MGL tools on your Mac machines. Otherwise, uh, use uh, the Windows version and also the Linux versions as well. So Linux versions are pretty uh, stable and you can use it, you know, anytime. But for the Mac uh, users, it is quite difficult so I would recommend everyone those who are uh, having Windows set up so they can use uh, this particular file so I have already downloaded it so if you click that and in the Windows 
you just go ahead I have already installed the Autodoc 5.7 so you can install it by uh, processing the information that is required uh, for the Windows users okay so this is uh, all about how to uh, download and install the MGL tools okay the latest version I recommend uh, everyone to use 1.5.7 which is the stable versions released I think recently okay the next thing that we are going to do is we have to download our protein target so what we are targeting uh, the protein the biological macromolecules and the ligand uh, from uh, different databases so in here I'm focusing on 6LU7 because all my tutorials are based on uh, this uh, main protease complex uh, COVID-19 6LU7 so go ahead and download the PDB format of it and it will be uh, downloaded uh, in your desktop as 6LU7.pdb okay now next proceed towards the ligand so this is the ligand that I have been using in all my tutorials in Gromax and Autodoc Vina and in here in Autodoc 4 as well so uh, this is called Nirma Trelvir and you can uh, go to the PubChem website and you can uh, you know search for the ligand uh, of which you are interested in and you can download uh, the 3d version of it so if you click on 3d so this is the 3d version and if you go to the download sections you have the STF format that is available so go ahead and download this I have already downloaded this so click on save and it will be automatically downloaded okay so now I have the protein and the ligand so if you go here to the download section uh, you can see that ligand which you have downloaded is uh, always named as confirmer 3d CID and the number you know the popcam ID of this and it is in STF format so how to process this protein and ligand for molecular docking I'm going to show you so let's close this and go to the Windows platform uh, if you have Chimera X installed then you can open the 6LU7 by using Chimera okay I'm going to open by using UCSF Chimera X so this is uh, for the protein uh, you know preparations how to how to set up your protein before uh, going for reading the molecules or adding the charges and hydrogens etc so first open your protein in UCSF Chimera or Chimera X go to the select section go to the residues and you can see that there are so many non-standard residues over here you don't need that you need a clean version of your protein file whenever you want to process any molecular talking because these non-standard residues are nothing but uh, th they can act as a ligand so whatever the conformations these uh, non-standard residues possess that will be very difficult for your for your ligand to be included uh, inside uh, to be to be docked uh, in the protein because these have already acquired the active site or you can say the allosteric site of the protein so that's why if you want to dock a new ligand, new ligand it will be docked somewhere else and your results are spurious you know and those are meaningless sometimes so I would suggest everyone to clean up the protein file first so go to the select residues all non-standards and go to the actions atoms and bonds and then delete delete everything and also check for the chain so in 6LU7 there are two chains uh, A and C as you can see over here A and C so select chains and go to the uh, C chain that is a peptide I think uh, so this peptide uh, also uh, acquires the active site or maybe the allosteric site which can you know change the conformation of the protein or which can uh, you know uh, make it uh, you know the, uh, the it can it can change the conformation okay so go ahead and delete 
uh, this particular chain okay so now you have the clean pdp file as you can see there are no non-standard residues or no chains associated with it so this is a clean version of your of pdb so you can hide it and you can see this is a clean version of it and go to the file save and save it in your folder so suppose i i name it as autodoc4 and you can save it as protein okay so protein.pdb has been saved in your folder so this is how you process the uh, pdb file uh, the, this is how you can process the protein now open the ligand which is the conformer over here but um, you can open it by using avogadro okay avogadro is a best software and it can be used to uh, process the small chemical structures as you can see here the sdf file which you have downloaded from the pubchem database can be directly opened in avogadro and you can process this file so as i have mentioned in my autodoc vina tutorial that you need to optimize the uh, optimize the chemical structure but first you have to build the hydrogens so add hydrogens first and then go to the extension and optimize geometry okay so click here you can see that the geometry is being optimized so optimize the geometry until you see that uh, none of the atoms uh, are moving uh, in your chemical structure so go ahead optimize it and it uses the default uh, uh, you know force fields which is uh, fine with the chemical structures so go ahead until you see that there are no structural uh, changes uh, in here and optimize it yeah you can see it is being optimized you can see that uh, some of the atoms are moving they are being optimized to a uh, particular conformations okay because the thing that you have downloaded from the popchem database is a conformer and this is not the actual state of your ligand that's why you need to optimize uh, the geometry in order to process for molecular docking and in order to get you know very good results or the precise results i would say it is optimizing it, it takes uh, a bit time to optimize and you can set up the uh, preference to i think this is about 100 steps you can make it to thousand steps as well yeah now you can see that now the atoms are not moving this is one of the conformer uh, which is the stable conformer based on Avogadro force field. So now I think the chemical structure has been optimized. Go to the file section and save as mold to file. Never save uh, any chemical structures in PDP file. Never do that because PDP file do not contain any of the charges associated with the chemical structures. So do not uh, do uh, save your chemical structures in PDB file rather save it as mold to file and mold to file is recognized uh, in autodoc4 so no need to worry only the protein structure uh, that you have obtained from PDB database that you can save it as PDB file but not the chemical structures never do uh, never save uh, any chemical structures in PDB format always save it as civil mold to format not even mold format save it as mold to format okay save here i'm going to save and let's name it as ligand okay so ligand.mold2 has been saved now close the window and you can see here uh order of four you can see your protein and ligand mold2 has been saved successfully okay now go to the autodoc tools this is the icon where you start your autodoc tools 1.5.7 so go ahead and click so a command line will be popped up since this is the backside processing or the back end of your mgl tools and this is the actual 
MGL tools uh, window. So this is the GUI of the MGL tools. And you have uh, Autodoc uh, 4.2, which has been pre-installed in MGL tools. So no need to worry about anything and just open it. Otherwise, there will be icon like this. It's called Autodoc 4.2. So click on that and this will be pop up. I mean, the settings for the uh, molecular docking or the MGL tools will be popped up in here. Okay. So the next thing that you want to do is since you have saved the ligand.pdb, sorry, uh, the protein.pdb file and ligand.mul2 file, first thing what you have to do is you have to open your PDB file that is your protein uh, PDB file. So file, read molecule, go to the folder that you have saved, autodoc for, and your protein PDB file. And this is your clean version of your PDB file. It can be opened uh, by using MGL tools. Okay, Autodoc 4. And you can see that there are no hydrogens associated with it. So the first thing what you want to do is go to the edit and delete water because you have already done that in UCSF Chimera X. So no need to perform this. And for your confirmations, that uh, let's just uh, click that uh, delete water and if there are any water molecules present in your PDB file, that will be deleted. Next, go to the edit and hydrogens. So first thing first, you, are, you have to add the hydrogens in order to make some intermolecular bonding with your ligand. Okay, so go to the hydrogens and add and first click all hydrogens. Okay, and then uh, make uh, all the other options default and click ok so that all the hydrogens will be added there are non-polar hydrogens also and there are polar hydrogens also ok so the next thing what you want to do is go to the hydrogens and click merge non-polar so in that way the non-polar hydrogens which are associated with carbon that will be merged and only the polar hydrogens with the nitrogen and oxygen atoms that will be uh, you know added to the protein file or your target protein okay the next thing that you want to do is you want to add the charges so in here for the macromolecules it is recommended to add the coleman charges okay before that i'm going to show you before adding any charges i'm going to show you one thing regarding the uh, you know partial charges or uh, the total charge or the net charge of the protein so let's go to this folder and you have protein.pdp file if you want to know uh, that what charges are associated with this protein.pdp file and if you add coleman charges what, how many uh, charges will be added so for that uh, i'm going to go for molecular dynamics uh, tutorial just to see that how the charges will be added i'm going to make it bigger and you can see that the first command that uh, in gromax that you get is gmx pdb to gmx hyphen f your protein dot pdb file and minus o uh, processed dot grow anything okay so if you click that you can know the charge uh, the total charge associated with your protein and I'm going to choose any uh, force fields. Uh, suppose I choose OPLS, the universal force field, 15. Okay, let me just make it, yeah, 15 I'm choosing. And if you click here and add any water model, uh, suppose I add one, and you can see that the total charge of your protein is minus four. Okay, this is uh, the charge uh, which is being currently uh, in your protein model so total charge is minus 4 and let's see what happens if we add the charges from here so charges add Coleman charges so if you click that Coleman charges you can see that total Coleman charge added is 4.0 you can see that the total the net charge of the protein is now 0 which is actually required for any bioinformatics analysis 
either it may be for molecular docking or it may be for molecular dynamic simulations this particular option is really important so that your protein uh, state is in neutral that is zero so as you can see here the total charge is minus four that's why if you add the Coleman charges uh, plus four has been added to it and makes it uh, 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 net charge is equal to zero I mean a neutral molecule so this is really important if you add the gas gear charges then it might be a little bit different from the Coleman charges so that's why it is recommended for any macromolecule to introduce Coleman charges rather than gas gear charges the gas gear charges are for the small chemical structures not for the protein molecules remember that this is very important that you need to add charges for the macromolecule that is Coleman charges okay so that's why uh, in here uh, since the total charge associated with with the protein is minus 4 you can see that when you add the Coleman charges uh, for positive 4 I mean the net charge of the protein becomes 0 okay so this is why you add Coleman charges now you have added the charges and you have added uh, you know hydrogens so now go to the atom section and assign ad4 type ad4 is the force field which is uh, currently uh, used by autodog4 or mgl2 so whenever you process any pdb files or the biological macromolecules so you have to assign the force field associated with autodoc4. So in here it is called AD4 type. So assign AD4 type so that the force fields are being optimized uh, for your PDB file to be processed in autodoc4. Okay. The next thing that you want to do is go to the grid and macromolecules, choose macromolecules and choose. Okay, in here you choose the macromolecule and click on protein and select it and you can see that a warning will be popped up initializing the protein PDB contains no non bonded atoms. Let's click OK and it will be saved uh, in your folder that you want uh, to save. So go here and save it in the Autodoc4 folder. Open and protein.pdbqt file will be saved over here save and you can see the folder okay these things i'm going to delete this is the, these are the gromax files so this is what uh, you get from uh, the by by saving the pdbqt file so if you choose the macromolecule in great macromolecule choose and then this protein.pdbqt file will be saved over here now next thing that you uh, want to process is your ligand so before uh, going for the ligand molecule i just want to quickly go through how the ligand.mol2 file looks like the mol2 file uh, contains all the charges so if you save the uh, ligand in pdb format these these uh, charges will not be associated with the ligand molecule sometimes the results are a little bit difficult to analyze so it is always recommended to save all your ligand molecules in mol2 format or any of your chemical structures in uh, mol2 format and you can see an an another thing that you want to see why you need to add gas gear charges to your lig ligand molecule because you can see when when I, when you save when you optimize your chemical structures in avogadro it automatically detects what the force field that is required to optimize any chemical structure and you can see that it automatically add gas gear charges that's why whenever you process any chemical structures in autodoc4 you need to add gas gear charges and whenever you want to process any uh, biological macromolecules or the pdb files you need to add coleman charges okay next go ahead to the ligand section go to the input open and open your uh, ligand.mol2 file autodoc4 and in here now uh, you can see that you have different options such as pdbqt uh, pdbq files mol2 files pdb files and all files so you have to select 
the mole two options and you can see that ligand has been popped up okay this is your ligand molecule and you can see that the charges have been kept from the mole 2 file which is really good whenever you process any pdb files in here the charges won't be associated with your pdb file that's why you need to use mole 2 file there are 29 nonpolar hydrogens which are being merged and there are five aromatic carbons and there are 11 rotatable bonds and the torsional degree of freedom is set to 8 okay so you just click uh, OK, the default options, and I think the ligand can be visualized. Uh, let's see if we can see our ligand over here. Yeah, this is our ligand. So I just yeah, this is our ligand molecule. So go to the ligand section and. Uh, input by using open and you can do uh, I'm just going to quickly go through all the options so first thing first is your torsional tree so you need to detect the root which is the default one and from where it can uh, uh, change the conformations and uh, the root of the chemical structures can be detected from here you can see here if you click on the detect root a green uh, circular Thing will be popped up and this is your root where it starts and where from where it can bend the molecule and uh, bend the chemical structures in different conformations so that is what uh, is the root of your chemical structures and next go to the uh, torsion t and choose torsions the next option is how many torsions that are required so if you go here there are the default one is eight there are eight different uh, torsions and okay let me just quickly make it ah uh, now you can see so this is your root and the red ones are unrotatable these are unrotatable in nature magenta ones uh, magenta ones are the non rotatable and the green ones are rotatable and you can see so this is your root this is uh, the green ones are rotatable in nature and these uh, red ones are non rotatable in nature so what you have to do is uh, first click on make all active bonds non rotatable so everything will be non rotatable and again make all rotatable bond rotatable and then click on here and you can see that uh, whenever you first open your ligand molecule the first thing that uh, a dialog box has been popped up and it it it, it uh, has showed that there are 11 rotatable bonds in here so if you click on this option and again this options uh, the default options that is 11 rotatable bonds those are in green color will be uh, set okay then click on done i think yeah now this is done and uh, your ligand has been processed now you want to save it as a pdb cutie file go to the ligand output and save as pdb cutie file so go to the folder that you want to save i'm saving in autodoc pro ligand.pdb cutie and just save it and you can see that your ligand.pdb cutie file has been saved successfully let me open it by using text editor and you can see that the charges are written if you saved it from a pdb file these charges won't be present in your chemical structures so that is really a tough job to predict the charges associated with it whenever you want to predict the molecular surface the electrostatic potentials this will not be popped up so that's why you need to save everything in mold to format and then you can you know proceed further okay so now your protein and ligand molecules have been saved successfully okay the grid parameter file but uh, for the protein and your ligand molecule so what you have to click is you have to select both the options the protein and the ligand if you unselect the ligand and if you want to set only for the protein then only protein maps will be created but if you choose the ligand as well then 
both the protein maps will be created and for that what you need to do is grid macromolecule uh, and choose okay and you can select the protein okay select the molecule it will say that uh, protein may already have uh, per atom partial charges do you want to preserve these charges yes uh, or instead of adding the gas to get charges yes it is that you have to click on yes okay now it has been your protein maps has been processed and now go to the grid options then set maps uh, set map types for the ligand molecule and you have to click directly in here and you can see that the map types for the ligand molecules will automatically be selected that means the fluorine atoms will also be added so these are the map types for your ligand molecule and click on accept then go to the grid and then click on grid box and you can see that a small box will be popped up so this small box is nothing but uh, your grid box since we are doing the blind docking we are not uh, doing the targeted docking in this particular tutorial you have to cover the whole protein uh, by using this box so what you have to do is so there are many different options the number one is number of points in x dimension y dimension and z dimension and these are your x centers y centers and z center the, uh, this, uh, the central part of your coordinates you know the x center y center and z center so for that you can uh, rotate this and you can increase the size of the box from uh, to the lowest point to the highest point that is 126 so if you uh, do like this so it will the highest point that is set is 126 or what you can do is you can right click and then set up the values so just directly type 126 and click on apply okay and for z dimension also you click 126 and click on apply okay now you can see that the box has been set but some of the molecules of uh, the protein they are outside the box which is not covered by this particular grid box so what you have to do is you have to increase the spacing angstrom okay now you increase the spacing angstrom and you can see that uh, most of the protein i mean the protein molecule has been covered inside the uh, has been covered inside this particular grid box so this is what you need for the blind docking so blind docking you have to cover the whole protein rather than targeting to a smaller portion of the protein okay so this is how you set the grid box for the whole protein and now you go to the file and close saving current current so this is the important option if you want to save your grid dimension file so you have to click on close saving current okay now we go to the grid and go to the output and save gpf okay. go to the folder where your all the files are there autodoc and here save it as grid uh, dot gpf okay now you save it so this is your grid dimension file you can open it by using any text editor so I'm using sublime so let's see yeah you can see that this is your grid.gpf file number of points has been set to 126 126 126 and these are the grid maps okay this is the spacing angstrom that you have used these are the receptor types and these are the ligand types you can see that F has been added which is the fluorine types for the ligand because the ligand contains fluorine atoms as well so you can see that both the receptor and the ligand types have been added okay this is called receptor atom types and uh, these are the ligand atom types if you select only the protein only the protein types will be selected uh, if you select both of them both of them will be selected so remember so um, while creating the grid maps you have to select both of them not the uh, protein itself or not the ligand itself but select both of them okay and uh, these are uh, these are this is the grid center that you require uh, uh, these are the points that i have shown previously in the pop-up box 
it also creates the electrostatic potential map dissolution protein map and your directed constants as well so this is how uh, your grid uh, parameters looks like so now you want to run the grid auto grid auto grid uh, you know uh, parameter file by using the auto grid executable okay so for that you need to go for the run and run auto grid and go here and these are the uh, executable files so these executable files can be downloaded from the website uh, here uh, if you type in autodoc tools download so this page will be popped up and you have to uh, download it for Windows version. So click in here and you have uh, I have already downloaded the Autodoc suit So if you click and proceed further then you have the folder uh, With the name I'm going to show you where it is. So go to the program files uh, C directory program files and the scripts research institute so Autodoc 4.2.6 and you can see that there are two executables that have been uh, created so you have to select this auto grid 4 from here so go to the browse this pc local dex c program files and your the scripts research institute autodoc 4.2.6 and auto grid 4 okay now it has been selected and go to the gpf file where you have saved your gpf file autodoc4 and your grid.gpf file so the log file will automatically be written to the folder in where the grid parameter uh, is there okay. if you click on launch you will see that the okay let me arrange it the, uh, there will be one output which is named as uh, grid.glg so these are the grid parameter files and the output file of the grid.gpf will be grid.glg so if you open this and you can see that it uh, the the run uh, is unsuccessful so it says unsuccessful completion so this is the basic problem that every windows users face you know so why this is happening so if you are a windows user and you are doing first time the autodoc uh, uh, the molecular docking using autodoc 4 using the mgl tools so this is the problem that every windows users will face so this is because the autodoc 4 uses the parameters file uh, specifically from the location of the folder the location of the folder and the executable files are really really important in this so for that if you see uh, if you go to the file option and go to the preferences and set command you can see that the startup directory for this uh, particular operation is set to uh, C uh, users and your username folder that is over here if you go to this PC uh, Windows C users and my name and you can see that uh, this folder has been set as a default for the autodoc file execution but all your files are there in your desktop that is in autodoc 4 okay in here you have all the files so if you want to access this grid parameter file so everything has to be created over here so uh, when the unsuccessful operation has been happening you can see that two files have been created here which could not find any other uh, parameter file so that's why there has been a successful uh, sorry unsuccessful completion of the auto create parameter file okay so for that what you need to do is you have to set the folder which is in here uh, in your directory where you saved all the protein your ligand and the grid parameter file okay so what you have to do is you have to copy the path and you have to set set it here save it uh, you know paste it over here and make it as default okay this option is really important you have to make it as default from where you are running uh, that directory okay 
So let's try to run again and go to the run auto grid and everything has been set and click on launch and you can see that now the executable has been successfully processed and if you can see that the maps have been created by using the auto grid options and you can see the ligand maps is also being created that is protein.f.map if you click and open by using any text editor let's try to open it yeah you can see that the parameter file for the ligand molecules and these are the parameter files that have been uh, created these are the maps actually the series of maps from the protein and your ligand file has been created and this is your output file as i have mentioned if you open it you can see that the files are being created and the grid map has been set for macromolecule and your ligand uh, molecules also and you can see that atom types uh, for the ligand molecules uh, like uh, a c f n a o a n and h d s t means hydrogens nitrogen oxygen fluorine carbon and aromatic carbon have been uh, set okay if you want to investigate uh, the grid parameter file for this you can see that uh, it creates the grid map based on the receptor coordinates fit within the following volume so this is the volume of your grid and i think since this is a blind docking the whole protein has been uh, covered in this particular grid uh, parameter file and these are the receptor types as you can see okay so both uh, the maps for the ligand and for the protein is being created if you go below i think uh, if it is executed no it is still running so it is creating the grid maps uh, it is uh, still running and the energetics which are associated with the grid map execution file the energy table you can read it from the documentation now from the autodoc4 documentation so where uh, different types of energies has uh, is being uh, calculated so it will take some time to create the uh, grid.glg file so this uh, this particular pop-up option means that the process is uh, running and if it closes down automatically that means the process is finished uh, for the grid map uh, settings okay so it will take some time so let's wait for some times and these are the files that are being created okay let me quickly go through uh, some of the uh, options that are uh, present in the uh, grid map file and uh, let's see if we can if i can find it from documentation It takes some time so so basically in the documentation it has been written that uh, these are this is the particular tool to define the atom types uh, for the grids that uh, that will be calculated and the grids must be calculated for each type of atom in the ligand uh, and if in the flexible side chains also uh, used in the receptor and their atom types uh, must also be included the option called directly allows the user to input the list of the atom types uh, directly and uh, this is how you set up uh, the grid box parameter file okay now you can see that the box has been you know vanished that means the process has been successfully completed if you go to the glg file and go below and you can see that it will be written successful completion so it has many different types these are the atom types and this is the minimum energy uh, which is in kilocalories per mole and these are the maximum energies associated with your receptor and your ligand file okay this is how you uh, do the grid box uh, parameter setting okay and uh, one more option uh, that you can also edit 
the GPF file while you were, uh, you were creating the grid uh, parameter file. This option can is also available, but it is better to edit the grid parameter file uh, in your text editor. That is much more easier. In here also, you can uh, edit your uh, grid parameter file. But most important thing is you have to set your uh, directory this is uh, the most important option so many windows users they face this problem because the directory has not been set properly so you have to set it you have to click on this make default from where the directory you are running and you can successfully create the uh, uh, successfully execute uh, the executable files such as auto grid and autodoc4 okay so we can go to the next step which is uh, related to the actual docking parameters, how to set up the docking, par docking parameters. Okay, so let's go ahead to that. The next thing that you want to do is setting up the docking parameters. So if you go to the docking and macromolecule, uh, so uh, go to this option called macromolecule, since you are doing a rigid um, docking, because I'm not going to tell you about the flexible residues because that is another tutorial where I can set up different types of flexible residues and flexible residues are for target docking, not for the blind docking. Blind docking is rigid and it is really straightforward that you set up the box for the whole protein and that's it. So that's why we are doing rigid uh, docking. So rigid file name, you have to set your protein. Okay, open. So now the rigid file has been set which is your pdp file the uh, protein uh, molecule and go to the ligand and next choose and this is your ligand molecule select ligand and you can see that there are these are the ligand atom types so uh, acf hd and uh, oxygen nitrogen hydrogens fluorine carbon uh, and uh, I think this is for some other atom I don't know what 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 it means ligand atom types a so uh, these are the atom types you know ligand atom types and this is the center of uh, the ligand molecule so what you have to do is the you have to accept it because this is the default option so the number of active torsions that you set in your ligand is 11 okay so accept that because that you have already set for 11 accept it okay so your ligand parameters have been saved okay then go to the search parameters so this thing is really uh, important i just want to tell you about uh, different options that are uh, available for uh, you know simulated docking and genetic algorithm and also for the local search parameters so so this is basically the conformational search so what are the conformations associated with it so genetic algorithm uh, this is called the lamarckian genetic algorithm this is the most efficient search for general applications like since you are doing molecular docking so this is basically the uh, most efficient uh, search algorithm in most cases these uh, this particular technique has been uh, used and if you go to the and and this uh, genetic algorithm may also be run without the local search but this is typically less uh, efficient than the Lamarckian uh, genetic algorithm okay and this simulated annealing is also less efficient uh, than the Lamarckian genetic algorithm but it can be used in some applications where search starting from a given point is desired. So this is generally used for targeted docking. Genetic algorithm can be used for the blind docking. So this is the most efficient. And local search parameters are also less efficient than genetic algorithm. That's why most people, uh, whenever they do molecular docking, they choose genetic algorithm. So if you click on genetic algorithm, so now you have different types of options. I just want to, you know, go through with these options. So the number of genetic algorithm runs over here 
is set as 10 10 is the default one you can increase this to 100 or 1000 depends on your cpu process or gpu process so for the sake of the tutorial i am just putting it 10 but i generally uh, use 50 or 100 confirmations to get exact and precise confirmations of the ligand bound to the protein and uh, you have uh, then the population size this is 150 and the maximum number of evaluations that are required is medium short or long so generally i go for the long which is around uh, you know around this value so if you go to the short it is around 250,000 steps if you go to the medium there will be another zero added and if you go to the long there will be another zero added so for the sake of the tutorial i go for the short one which can be done faster but uh, whenever uh, i run my calculations then i put 100 over here and i choose long okay so that it can give you uh, much more efficient uh, precise calculations of the confirmations so I'm going to go for the short and 10 confirmations okay and the rest of the uh, parameters you make it uh, as default generally people use it default because the algorithm has been optimized and the default values those are present in here they are optimal for any molecular docking uh, experiments so if you want to look into other different parameters then you can uh, read up on the documentations and you can set up the gene mutation rate of the crossover and uh, so many options are available so generally i change these two options and then i go for uh, you know accepting the values for the molecular docking analysis just accept it okay so now your genetic algorithm search parameters has been set and now you go for the docking parameters so docking parameters generally make it as defaults or you can choose you can customize uh, the parameters for your molecular docking just accept it okay next you have uh, different types of uh, autodoc 4.2 parameters this is the general force field parameter that has been uh, used in autodoc 4.2 uh, uh, force field parameters so these parameters are well defined and you don't need to change anything out of it okay now you go to the output and select here lamarckian uh, genetic algorithm because uh, this particular option lamarckian genetic algorithm uh, provides the most efficient uh, search for general applications in comparison to all the uh, other algorithms even the conventional genetic algorithm also this Lamarckian genetic algorithm works really well so that's why I always select Lamarckian GA okay now it's being selected now it says that you have to save your DPF file go to the folder and save it as doc.dpf okay now save it and go to the folder and you can see that your doc.dpf has been saved open it with a text editor and you can see that all the parameters that you just recently set has been uh, in this particular dpf file okay and these are your ligand types already your protein types have been set in the auto grid format so now it sets up your ligand uh, types okay now everything is set you don't have to worry about anything and if you want to change these options you can also change it over here you just have to uh, type it something like this and you can change by reading up the documentations and you can set it uh, for uh, uh, autodoc parameters file okay now everything is set now you go to the run now you click on run autodoc and then go to the executable file which you have uh, in your C directory this PC and local C uh, program files and go to the scripts research institute autodoc 4.2.6 and select autodoc 4 okay and your 
dpf file which is present in your folder that is doc.dpa and then click on launch so it will this window will pop up that means your uh, execution is running and if you go to the folder autodoc4 and you can see that uh, doc.dlg will be automatically uh, being created as an output file for the docking okay so if you click on uh, the dlg file so the output name for the docking parameter is dlg if you open by using sublime text editor or any text editor that you have so you can see that it is being successfully created and the genetic algorithm docking is uh, uh, since you have input 10 steps so 10 steps uh, will be uh, it, it will create 10 runs I mean 10 steps will be created so this is the first step and uh, yeah this is the first step that is called run one and it has the free energy of binding minus 3.58 kilocalories per mole inhibition constant of 2.37 uh, millimolar these are the intermolecular energy with the van der Waals with the hydrogen bonds dissolution energy and electrostatic energy this is the final total internal energy this is the torsional free energy and this is unbound systems uh, energy so the formula that I have mentioned before so it will evaluate on the basis of the formula and it will give you a final estimated free energy of binding so 10 runs so this is the first run and you can see the second run you can see the third run fourth run so there will be total of 10 runs uh, you see uh, that uh, the program is being finished and everything has been successfully you know uh, done so this pop-up box uh, which uh, pops up when you run uh, for auto dock or auto grid it will be vanished that means your program is successfully executed okay now just uh, minimize this window and just minimizing this window just to see how the docking parameter files look like so let me open it again and you can see that uh, if you go below to the final step there will be a table created uh, with histogram uh, with histogram data and also your final state of energies and in here you can see that there will be a name called cluster analysis of confirmations so these are the confirmations that has been created uh, by using uh, auto doc 4 okay so you can see that number of confirmations 10 and uh, these are the rmsd cluster analysis okay of a total of 38 atoms and this is the clustering histogram so what does this mean so the basic parameter that has been used for uh, your confirmation calculations or the root mean square deviation the tolerance has been set to 2 angstrom only from the original confirmation to the final confirmations there will be a deviation of uh, the tolerance is set to 2 angstrom only okay what does that mean that the confirmation of one ligand to the confirmation of second ligand the deviation or the root mean square deviation will be around 2 angstroms okay and next uh, go for the clustering histogram that means these are the, your cluster ranks and these are your lowest binding energy the lowest binding energy for the run number 6 is minus 5.27 this is your best ligand confirmation okay and the clusters that has been created it has been docked in several positions but sometimes uh, what you can find is in here you have something like this that means all the run that has been uh, in, in in this particular confirmations there are i think uh, a number of hashes means that those many confirmations are uh, present in that particular uh, position of your ligand okay sometimes you will see that i mean most of the time you will see that but in this case what you what i 
uh, found out is that there are 10 conformations and they have no clusters there are single conformations with the binding energies the highest uh, conformation that you want to select is minus 5.27 that means the more the negative the highest is the binding okay so minus 5.27 so if you go to cluster number six uh, let's see this is uh, cluster number nine Cluster means the run number nine, this is seven, and this is your sixth one. Yeah, this conformation of your ligand is the most appropriate conformation for this particular target. You can see that the estimated free energy of binding is minus 5.27 kilocalories per mole. Okay, so one, two, three, four. It has been calculated on the basis of these four parameters. Number one is final intermolecular energy that is one plus your total internal energy number three is the torsional free energy minus unbound systems energy so this is the uh, uh, bound conformation minus your unbound conformation will gives you uh, this free energy of winding okay delta g as i have mentioned in my slide that bound state minus the unbound state will give you the free energy of binding and the estimated inhibition constant for this is 136 micromolar okay so uh, this uh, inhibition constant is really uh, an important parameter for the experimentalist to validate whether the inhibition constant is high or inhibition constant is less so if you go to the next conformation and uh, if you see here the ki the inhibition constant for this is 6.62 millimolar okay uh, but in here uh, you have a micromolar okay so the highest is the binding if the binding energy is highest that means less will be your uh, inhibition constant if the binding energy is less the inhibition constant will be more so it, it is a vice versa relationship okay the energy of binding the free energy of binding is equal to 1 by ki that is the formula so this is how you estimate the uh, inhibition constant and you can report it to any experimentalist so they can evaluate the binding by using experimental techniques and this inhibition constant is really an important uh, parameter for uh, validation of your ligand bound to the protein or ligand binding or a ligand protein interactions okay so this is how you predict now we can go through uh, the actual uh, processing of uh, your doc file your doc ligand file to the protein by using mgl tools okay let's begin now what you want to do is you want to open a clean version of the GUI of Autodoc tools. We need to analyze the DLG files that have been created using Autodoc 4, the ligand which is docked to the protein. So what you need to do is go to the analyze option, go to the dockings and open the results. So in here, uh, here is the folder where I have, uh, ha I have the DLG file of the docking results so open the dlg file okay so it will say a warning will be popped up it will say that read 10 docked confirmations from the doc.dlg that means when you uh, when you are setting the parameters for uh, docking parameters uh, you set 10 uh, confirmations so that's why it read 10 docked confirmations and the next option is use analyze confirmations play to view okay so press ok and your confirmations are set here go to the analyze and select macromolecule this is very important because you need the macromolecule in order to uh, uh, see the confirmations of the ligand to where it binds to the protein molecule okay so in order to visualize uh, the ligand you just have to click over here 
or maybe the surface view as well so that you can see where your ligand is okay in here the ligand is placed over here this is not the confirmations uh, this is the initial confirmation and when you zoom in on a little bit uh, then you can see yeah you can see uh, you can center the macromolecule and you click on this particular options this is the surface uh, surface view display the atomic spheres of the ligand sorry this is the sphere uh, of for the ligand so that you can see exactly where the ligand bind so go to the analyze and then confirmations and then select play okay now this is your first confirmation that one uh, which was showing before was your zeroth uh, uh, confirmation that means the initial version this is your first confirmation and if you go and click on this play button i mean uh, the uh, cursor the right cursor button so second confirmation third confirmation fourth confirmation fifth confirmation sixth seventh eighth ninth and total of 10 confirmations are present over here if you click on this play button uh, it will the the results will be automatically displayed and all the confirmations will be played in this particular window so there are 10 confirmations means 10 times it will play so that one was the zeroth one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten okay if you go to this end option it will show you so this is the option uh, if you if you press on the end button and there are options called show info you have to click on there and th that is the only thing that you require right now so what it can show is if you click on the play button you will see that it automatically uh, updates the binding energy i mean these are the confirmations 10 confirmations if i click this one so let me yeah this is the zeroth confirmation if you click the right cursor button one you see the binding energy for the first confirmation is minus 3.58 okay and these are uh, various results as a, a associated with your ligand confirmations if you click on the second one yeah the binding energy minus 2.74 in the in the doc.dlg file when we were analyzing the doc confirmations and the binding energy we have seen that number sixth confirmation has the highest binding energy right that is minus 5.27 you can see here this is the uh, best confirmations that we get from our results and you can see the information over here so in that way you can analyze uh, you can compare the doc.dlg file using a text editor and this particular uh, option okay so i'm just going to close it so this is how you get the information from your binding confirmations of your ligand okay now go to analyze options and there is another option called clustering so if you click here show it will show the clustering of your ligands so let me open yeah let me open the dlg file dr dlg file in a text editor yeah in this uh, you can if you go to the table just type in control find histogram and you will directly be redirected to this particular option where you can see that number six run is minus 5.27 and there are only one confirmation in this particular cluster so if you compare this one with this particular window you can see that uh, there are total of 10 confirmations you can count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and the closest one will be uh, you know clustered and the farthest one will be clustered separately so if uh, in, in this particular option if you have three confirmations in this first uh, run in this particular run then you might have uh, three confirmations over here 
So something like that. So it is a typical histogram which depicts this particular table in the form of 2D graph. Okay, this is very important and maybe you can utilize this diagram for publication quality uh, figures. So go ahead and I think you can write, edit, write. This is the postscript file. Uh, go to the desktop, your autodopo and just type in cluster. Okay, and save it. Save this file as cluster. Okay, let me just... Yeah, this is your cluster file. And the tolerance of the RMSD is 2, 2.0 angstrom. That one we already uh, discussed uh, before, uh, why there is a tolerance of 2.0 angstrom, okay. So this is how you can uh, see that uh, the best conformations, and this is the binding energy from minus 6.0 to minus 2.0. The high, the negative value, the more efficient is the binding. So this binding conformation is one of the best conformations that we get uh, from this particular document. Okay. So this is all about clustering. So go to analyze clustering and you can uh, see the clustering over here if you play show. Okay. The next thing that this particular uh, conformation, the sixth conformation is the best conformations. So if you click on this end button, and if you see here you can just type in build edge bonds okay so it will create uh, different edge bonds and you can see that two atoms in edge bonds one is glycine 143 and another one is glutamine 166 so these are the two hydrogen bonds and you can click on show energy okay so a donor uh, hydrogen and acceptor so pi pi uh, interactions as well okay so in this way you can build but in order to get the confirmations and the pdbqt files to analyze using different softwares like discovery studio or uh, ucsf chimera x what you want to uh, do here is this particular option you just unclick this and go to the build all options okay if you click on build all options you will see that all the confirmations will be built over here all the confirmations like uh, uh it, it starts from zero zero means your first confirmation and ninth means your tenth confirmation so zero means one first confirmation second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth and ten so remember that the zero confirmation is not your initial confirmation but it renamed as confirmation zero that uh, that is so if you unclick these options and if you want to see the zeroth confirmation that is your first confirmation that's why it is named as confirmation zero so this is your uh, zeroth confirmation so if you unclick this uh, this is your zeroth uh, confirmation and if you click on this this is your first confirmation over here you can you can uh, click on this to gain the uh, to get the spear format uh, of those particular confirmations you can see this is your first confirmation. so remember that confirmation zero is your first confirmation not the initial confirmation like zero uh, in, in in the previous case what we have seen so we built all the confirmations and then what you have to do is write all options just click on write all options and if you go to the folder you can see that all the confirmations has been written okay so this is confirmation one confirmation two three four five six seven eight and nine and there will be zero confirmation as well okay so zero means one one means two two means three uh, this is all because of the indexing, uh, the indexing of the Autodoc uh, tool. So there are total of 10 confirmations. What you want to do is click on this particular AND option. And if you want to write a complex of this particular structure file, you can go here and write the complex. So just click on write complex and you type in, this is the best complex that we found out .pdbqt 
and save it in the folder and you can see that the best complex .pdbqt has been saved if you open this and you can see that this is the confirmations that we are talking about this is the doc uh, 6 run and in the index file it is doc number 5 okay so this is where you get all the uh, best complex uh, out of all the 10 docked runs okay so you open it you open it with the UCSF Chimera X and then you can process it later on I, I'm going to show you how to process this file in order to get publication quality figures okay now since you have written the complex file you have written all the confirmations you have built all the uh, confirmations out of it so this is your uh, you know the best confirmations what uh, so if you click on this for fifth confirmation and you make it as a sphere you can see that this is your best confirmation okay now what you can do is go to the build edge bounds and you can see that uh, this particular option we have seen previously that it is uh, creating two hydrogen bonds with the glycine 143 and glutamine 166 okay now what you want to do is uh, you go to this uh, uh, this option will close the player okay if you click on that so this option will close the uh, player and you just unclick all these uh, you know confirmations and just click on this one and go to analyze options docking and here you can uh, just go to show interactions and it will show you the interaction diagram of this particular conformation to your protein since we have seen two hydrogen bonds associated with it you can see that uh, this particular conformation the best uh, binding conformations that you have it has exactly uh, the same bond bondings with uh, glycine 143 in here you can see and another one is glutamine 166 if you just make it yeah this is the good view i would say and you can see that hydrogen bonds are represented uh, okay let me just make it yeah hydrogen bonds are represented in green color so that the atom from your ligand is interacting with glycine 143 amino acid residues and you can see another one over here uh, the green color it is binding to uh, glutamine 166 okay if you want to uh, increase these spheres you just have to go here and increase the size of these spheres you can see that uh, you can actually uh, prominently see the hydrogen bondings you can see the green color are the two most probable hydrogen bondings associated with this particular ligand conformation that is the sixth run and your conformation is fifth conformation okay and you can increase the quality the color the spacing also you can make it like this you can reduce and you can increase the spacing and these are the amino acid residues you can just click in here it will be automatically okay let me zoom in and you can see uh, how the hydrogen bond looks like so this is another particular diagram that you require uh, to uh, use it for your publication quality so what you want to do is just uh, yeah, you can set the background color as well so generally the white is the preferred one so uh, we need this particular diagram as in white background uh, in order to use it in publication quality figures you can click here the hydrogen bonds and you can display the spheres as a wireframe and solid if you click on solid this is the solid format and if you click on wireframe so this will be in wireframe all the two hydrogen bonds will be in wireframe format okay make it solid and display ribbon for the nearby residues if you 
need only this particular interaction you just you, you can just uh, use a screenshot or maybe you can use this save image options so just save image if you click that option so output file you go to the autodoc profile and save it as uh, interaction autodoc okay dot png and save it so this file uh, will be saved in that particular folder if you go to that folder you can see that this particular file has been saved it is quite good for a publication quality figure so no, no need to worry okay and uh, yeah this is how you can save the uh, interaction file uh, of your ligand and the protein complex the best confirmation and the hydrogen bondings as well all right so if you go again and show interactions it will automatically show this particular window and if you click over here it will be gone and you can increase the radii of this bond so that it will be prominently visible and yeah and if you close that box these hydrogen uh, bonds will be uh, vanished i mean will not be displayed if you see this particular diagram there are no hydrogen bonds because you have closed that box so remember to you know open that particular box so again go to the docking and show interaction and now you can see there's uh, that the hydrogen bonds are colored in green color you can increase the radii and keep this uh, box open okay and now you save the image so if you save the image now so type in with hbonds.png and save it over here okay and now you can see that the figure has the hydrogen bonds if you close this particular window then this uh, particular hydrogen bonds will be vanished so remember to uh, open this dialog box and then save the image otherwise it will be uh, gone so you won't get the hydrogen bonding patterns over here okay now since you have saved all the uh, images for the publication uh, for the publication purpose uh, this is how you analyze the interactions okay and uh, this is all uh, just uh, go to the dockings open your dlg file select the macromolecule your uh, confirmations play and then clusterings to save the 2d diagram and docking with show interactions to uh, analyze the hydrogen bond patterns okay so now you have all the files required to process with another software that is discovery studio or maybe chimera x so now everything is done with mgl tools and autodoc4 so you want to close it so close it it will take some it will take some time to close the window oh my this is open okay let me close this okay so now you have all the files associated with it okay set so if you open this uh, particular folder you have all the files the interaction diagram without the hydrogen bonds the interaction di diagram with the hydrogen bonds and your all the confirmations and just clean it up using the kind option and you can see this is your best complex doc 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay 0 means 1 remember that this is your initial ligand dot pdbqt and this is your protein dot pdbqt file and the file that you saved uh, from the analysis that is the best complex dot pdb what you can do is you can just open it uh, using ucsf chimera x okay and you want the background white for the analysis okay so this is your ligand file go to select residues your unl is your ligand file make it uh, 
make it as ball and stick model okay then go to the select change chain a and make it as a surface by selecting uh, go to the molecule display and show so you can see that surface view of this particular uh, protein chain uh, will be displayed and this is your ligand the best conformation out of it okay if you want to change the color go to the action color and make it to light sea green or something okay then go to the home option and click on soft and now you can see that a very good uh, you know elegant image has been created which can show exactly how the uh, ligand conformation is with the protein molecule and if you go to the residues and select UNL and action go to the view you can see this wonderful diagram where you can use it for publication quality you know figures this particular option uh, you can go and take a snapshot out of it so let me just make it yeah, a little bit adjust and then take a snapshot out of it so this will be used for publication quality as well now go to the so it takes some time so let's see if it creates go to the desktop i think it is saved in your desktop file okay yeah you can see that it is being created and very nice uh with a 300 dpi resolution will be created and you can use it exactly in your publication okay so now go to the action and click on view again so it will be automatically centered and go to the select change chain a molecule display and hide the surface you don't need the surface right now okay go to the select residues and unl and click on edge bonds so now the edge bonds have been created go to the action and then again click on view now you can see that uh, this is the particular docked uh, confirmation okay go to the home and do not click on soft but click on full so this will generate the shadow and full lighting uh, to your uh, confirmation okay so just adjust it and make it to the center by clicking on option and then and then just dragging it okay so this looks good now what you can do is you uh, uh, go to the right mouse section and just click on label okay and wherever there are interactions the interactions are displayed as blue uh, sticks and you can click in here click on here somewhere over here you can see the amino acid residues will be popped off click on here you will see another amino acid residues amino another amino acid residues okay so <clears throat> in this way you can uh, you know name your amino acid residues and your interaction uh, yeah interaction thing over here and you can adjust it so this is your ligand okay so just uh, clear it out by go to select and clear it out and okay there is another option here you just yeah 166 over here. okay this is how you can create these 2d diagrams uh, by using the 3d confirmations of the ligand and you just save it okay over here there is another interactions so that one was glycine 143 as we have seen uh, in the autodoc uh, results okay there are also many other interactions so take a good confirmation view and then uh, just click here as snapshot okay take the snapshot out of it so this will be used in your publication as well okay so now you have all the diagrams required for your manuscript and then what you can do is if you want to uh, display the 2d confirmations the 2d uh, diagram of the interactions you have to open the discovery studio visualizer 
open the Discovery Studio client. Remember the confirmations that we have saved uh, in Autodoc 4. These confirmations can be utilized over here in uh, Discovery Studio Visualizer. What you have to do is you just have to drag in the confirmations that you are interested in. So our confirmation is uh, doc uh, confirmation 5. So just drag in and it will automatically open the window for you. Okay, this is your PDBQT file. And what you now require is your protein.pdbqt file, the micromolecule. Just drag in here. Okay, so now the protein and the ligand has been dragged in. Next thing what you want to do is uh, go to this particular chain D. So this is your ligand file. Define the ligand and then go to the protein. Okay, and then uh, define the receptor. So now the ligand and the protein has been defined. Go to the ligand interaction. Okay, this is your interaction profile and go to the show 2d diagram if you click on show 2d diagram it will show you the 2d uh, diagram of this particular uh, interaction of this particular confirmation so go to the display style and go to the ball and stick or maybe disk format okay and then residues using the plate or maybe the disk shape and interactions with show distance apply these are the distances and these are the interactions that are there with this particular ligand and uh, if you remember we have seen that glycine 143 has been involved in the interaction and I think glutamine 166 has been involved and uh, asparagine 142 also involved where while we were uh, analyzing using UCSF chimera and there are many more interactions as well so you can just go here and copy this and open uh, keynote keynote for the Mac users and you can open PowerPoint also PowerPoint for Windows users and also the Mac users can also use PowerPoint as well so I'm going to show you how to uh, paste this diagram uh, how to how to create a publication quality figure just paste in, in here okay this is your 2d diagram okay now you close this particular window because you don't need this once you get the 2d format of the interaction close it I mean this is your best confirmation this is what you require this is your 2d confirmations now go to uh, this particular interactions with the bonds as you have shown uh, previously so yeah this is the bonding confirmations the next thing that you require is from the UCSF chimera image uh, you can see this particular image uh, you can paste in here okay and your interaction image as well so this is the interaction image okay so now you have four different diagrams Number one is with from UCSF Chimera. Second one is again from UCSF Chimera. Uh, the third one uh, is from uh, the Autodoc tools. Just crop it a little bit and then maximize it. Okay. You can adjust the settings as well. And again, you crop uh, this one a little bit. that's it so this is your uh, you know interaction profile of confirmation 6 if you click on PowerPoint you can see that this is the particular image from UCSF chimera this is from UCSF chimera this is one interaction diagram from the autodoc and this is your 2d diagram from discovery studio visualizer so this is the way how you create publication quality figures for molecular docking analysis and you can save it uh, and you can save these uh, four images uh, by using the group option just group it okay and save as a picture 
save as a picture in your folder auto log for picture one okay save and you can see that yeah this is your file basically okay this one you can use it for uh, your manuscript so this is how you you know do the analysis by using mgl tools build the confirmations and uh, you uh, define uh, particular interaction profile with the different confirmations of your ligand and if you want to compare whether your ligand is particularly binding to that site where you have downloaded your pdb file uh, from the pdb database so just what you have to do is go to pdb sorry just type in 6lu7 okay it will be redirected to your pdb database uh, download the file i have already downloaded but again uh, for your uh, interaction profile i just want to show it so open the 6lu7 uh, downloaded from the pdb file and you can see here the ligand has been docked over here so if you go to the select residues and click on all non-standard residues so this is your uh, ligand confirmation so yeah and let the chain be like action uh, color it as light gray and make it white background you can see that this is your uh, ligand i think your ligand is in chain okay this one is your ligand so action uh, and then go to the ball and stick model yeah this is your particular ligand if you want to verify that whether your docked confirmation from the auto dock tool is in this particular binding site or not you just have to go here open your folder and you can see that this is your final confirmations that you are interested confirmation five this is the sixth run okay just drag in here and you can see that your ligand has been docked to this particular binding site so in this way uh, you can verify whether your ligand is binding to that particular site and this particular confirmation has the highest uh, binding energy right so this particular confirmation has highest binding energy that means this is the best binding force uh, that you get from uh, autodoc analysis okay and this has the binding energy of minus 5.27 right so this is how you can uh, analyze uh, or uh, evaluate your binding confirmations with the pdb downloaded uh, pdb files okay from uh, different databases or from the experimental value so that's why i call uh, autodoc or autodoc 4 force field as a semi empirical force field because it uses the experimental value and also it uses the hypothesis that we are going to uh, predict right so this is the way how you confirm uh, or evaluate your ligand binding poses now the next thing that you require as i mentioned previously that if you have the highest binding energy you have the lowest inhibition constant okay so let me open this file if you go to any particular confirmation since we are interested in doc number six so we go to the sixth uh, if you go down in this dlg file um, let's see below the cluster uh, histogram file you have um, a series of all the pdbqt coordinates and uh, you can see that uh, it is uh, ranked based on the binding energy so after this particular uh, table you can see that uh, these runs have been particularly ranked based on binding energy so the best binding energy will come first so that is your run number six with the uh, uh, free energy of binding that is minus 5.27 kilocalories per mole and 
your inefficient constant is 136 micromolar. So if you want to create a diagram or 2D diagram for this uh, particular you know, inhibition constant, then you tabulate it uh, by using uh, Microsoft Word and you can write, uh, just let me show you one table, open the Word document and you can give it as a supplementary file as well. So insert and then table. So let me just make it like this. Okay. The number one option is your, let's say, confirmations. You can just type in. So binding energy, your inhibition constant. You can also write here the total internal energy and here torsional free energy here unbound energy okay and you type in minus 5.27 everything is in uh, kilocalories per mole except the inhibition constant that is in micromolar or millimolar okay minus 5.227 so the 136.81 and you copy this micromolar from here okay and uh, you can copy all these files uh, all these numbers all these values from here and you can create a table uh, out of it so this is uh, really important uh, for oh, sorry let me see minus 2.9 97 torsional free energy is 2.39 and then 2.97 something like this okay you can create this table and give it as a supplementary file and if you notice one thing that this has the highest binding energy and the lowest inhibition constant this is in micromolar if you go to the second confirmation and you can see that this particular value when you have the uh, second uh, binding energy uh, free energy of binding that is uh, minus 3.80 which is less than this particular conformation you can see that there, there will be an increase in inhibition constants so this is in millimolar but this is in micromolar you see the difference so if you go to the last conformation and if you want to check uh, whether uh, it has uh, the inhibition constant whether it is higher or lower so this is the inverse relationship between the energy the free energy of binding or the binding energy with the inhibition constant if your binding energy is higher there will be lower inhibition constant and if the binding energy is less the inhibition constant will be more in this case so if you tabulate by using a 2d graph by using origin or graph pet prism you will uh, find out uh, how this is uh, different uh, with the, the the trend will be opposite when you have the highest one when you have the lowest one uh, when you have the highest binding energy and lowest binding energy your inhibition constant will be again lowest and highest so this is the inverse uh, relationship so this will be particularly useful for all the experimentalists those who are doing analysis uh, by using uh, different experimental techniques Okay, this is how you can analyze inhibition constant and free energy of binding. You can tabulate uh, a table with all these energies and you can give it as a supplementary file. And uh, yeah, this is all about molecular docking analysis. And this is how I do molecular docking analysis using NGL tools, Autodoc Vena as well. And uh, uh, not only 10 confirmations uh, I generate, but I generate 100 and uh, even sometimes I generate 500 confirmations to exactly uh, get the precise confirmation of your particular ligand to, uh, uh, you know, particular ligand attached to uh, proteins or bound to proteins. So this is the best complex that I have shown and I have shown you how 
uh, you can verify whether this is binding to this particular binding site or not so if you generate 500 confirmations this will be even more precise and accurate with RMSD the root mean square deviation of 2.0 angstrom so yeah this is all about molecular talking I have given all the uh, you know tools that are used for molecular talking and how to troubleshoot how to install it and how to uh, set the directory that you are using for autodoc uh, tools for the windows users and the same thing you can replicate in mac users also for the mac and for the linux as well so all of them are same so this is this particular video is all for windows users and i hope it will be useful for you and uh, happy docking thank you very much